I'm Barry Winbolt. I wrote a post recently on my blog where I was thinking about why we're so bad at managing stress. There's a, a whole wealth of information out there. Indeed, I put a lot out myself. I've been a stress manager for over 30 years now. And it seems to me that in that time, we haven't really got any better at managing stress, although we're provided with a lot of information. I put this webinar together to expand on an idea. And I'm asking the question, why shouldn't we just give in to stress? See what you think. I think we'd all agree that stress is a problem in most people's lives at some point. And managing it Although it's easy to say, and as I've already mentioned, there's a lot of information about there, out there about man managing stress, it's much harder to do, to put into practice. Despite all of the advice that we're offered, we still struggle. And stress management becomes, or risks becoming, just another item on the to-do list. When something's not working, according to my philosophy and the philosophy of people like me who work in brief therapy, then... Surely it's time to do something different. Banging on about stress management and trying to keep up with trends and practices and classes and all of those things that are recommended to us, when we know very well we probably won't keep going with them for more than a few weeks at best. Surely it's time to change. And I'm here to say, well you can, there's another way of doing it. Let's take a look at that. Stress has been called the epidemic of the 21st century by the World Health Organization. It's no longer a question of if you'll get stressed, but how much stress you'll suffer and when. For some people, as they will tell you, it's pretty well constant. And nobody escapes the pressure. It's happening to people younger and younger. Children are now reporting that they're stressed at school and we have something called academic stress and achievement stress. It's unremitting and unrelenting. And far from learning how to be more resilient and learning how to combat or cope with stress better, we're not actually achieving any greater levels of peace, harmony and stress freedom than we were a few years ago. So all of the information we're chucking at it doesn't seem to be working. In fact, some attempts to reduce stress can actually make it worse. Take drinking and smoking, for example, or some of the things that people do, habits they indulge in, in the belief that actually that will help them reduce their stress. It's a busy, busy world. There is so much going on, so much of the time, for so many people, that it doesn't get any easier to manage, despite our best efforts. So in this brief webinar, lasts about half an hour, I'm going to tell you that stress provides many opportunities it may be a losing battle for many people, but there are positive effects on the economy. Stress brings with it the opportunity for change. And so you can relax. Maybe there's no reason to break free from stress after all. Maybe we could just give up on all of this stuff about stress management and go with it and be stressed and see where it takes us. There might be advantages. I've got several reasons that I say this. Reason number one. You're a human, you're not a machine, you can't win. You cannot, despite the fact that others may be cranking the pressure up on us, you can't keep up indefinitely. The pressure is mounting and we can't control it because a lot of it comes from outside ourselves, it's circumstantial, it's built into the way our systems and our society work. Added to that, there's what I call environmental noise. It's on the increase, intrusive stuff like Muzak. When were you last in a restaurant, if you go to restaurants and they piped music at you that you hadn't chosen? So the environmental noise and many other things like that are trying to grab our attention the whole time. It's on the increase. So you can't win. Multiple demands are increasing exponentially. The busier we get, the more technological we get, the harder it gets to resist this wave of stressors. And then there's social media. Now, we love it, I know, and I, I do too. I'm not knocking social media. But the way we allow it to tr intrude on our lives, even to the point where people feel they can't control it, is definitely stressful. I was speaking to two people at one training event recently. This is two people out of a total of about 30 at the event. That's, that's a percentage already. And maybe there are others who didn't mention it. These two people both claim to have serious sleep problems. 
related to the use of um, Facebook or Twitter or whatever it was they were using. So, you know, it's intrusive and if you're not careful, it develops into bad habits. So reason number one is that you can't win. It's a rising tide and we can't control it. Reason number two is that industry needs you. The stress industry does, for example. It needs us to be stressed. Otherwise, no stress industry. Think of all those self-help books, seminars, courses, CDs. Runs into billions of pounds. Forbes magazine said 11 billion a year recently. Well, I don't know the exact figure, but it's a lot of money. And of course, people like me, I'm part of it. I work as a, an advisor. I help people with their stress. I'm a therapist uh, and a consultant. But I have to say, I'm not getting much of that 11 billion, by the way. But, um, you know, we need you. We need you to keep out there staying stressed and keep coming to see us and keep us in work. Now, stress is tragic, I know, but it also provides jobs for many people. Think about this. People leave work because of stress. That creates an opportunity for somebody else. Staff turnover, people change jobs. There's another spin-off too. Rapid change and opportunity, reason number three. One in four people change their jobs because of stress. I've already touched on that. Now, that obviously creates opportunity for others, but also the people who choose to jump ship like that are being very brave. They're being very adventurous. They're jumping off a comfortable, safe platform. Perhaps they had a job they liked. Perhaps the salary was okay, relatively secure, and they are forced by stress to leave their job and go and look for work elsewhere or possibly start working for themselves or, or doing something that they think will produce less stress. Without stress pushing them, they would not have had that opportunity of exploring new pastures, new horizons. So maybe it's not all bad that we have stress in our lives. Here's another thing. 20% of people, one in five, admit to taking days off because of stress. Of course, they don't tell the boss it's because of stress. They say it's backache, it's migraine, it's whatever it happens to be. Nevertheless, when you speak to people privately, and I do thousands of them every year in my seminars and workshops, they will tell you that a regular stress management technique among themselves, but certainly with their colleagues, they'll admit for other people, if not for themselves, is that they take a day off now and again just to cope. Sometimes it turns into more than a day off. It turns into a week or two weeks. Indeed, sadly, tragically, some people never go back to work because of stress. Now, not... I'm not saying that's okay, but I am saying it's not all bad. Because if you have a fixed amount of holiday a year, and then you manage to take two days, five days, whatever it is, a month off because of stress, you wouldn't take those days off if you weren't stressed. You'd be sitting reliably, doing your job, supporting the organisation, supporting the service users, whatever it happens to be. So if you're managing to take an extra few days off because of stress, that stress is actually winning you a few days extra holiday a year. Even quite a few. If it's five days a month, that's uh, 60 days a year extra holiday. That's a lot of holiday that you wouldn't have if you weren't stressed. So it's not all bad, as I've said. Now, employers love competition, don't they? They love competition, apparently, between colleagues. Personally, I don't enjoy it. But... It is a great thing. It stimulates creativity, apparently. It stimulates intellectual achievement and so forth. So employers love competitivity. And we have the phenomenon through stress also of presenteeism. So the stress, anxiety of stress drives people to do better, to be competitive with their colleagues, apparently. It pushes them to stay in the office later and later and later. So they're the last to leave or they leave, leave after their manager. Again, they wouldn't do this if they weren't stressed. If they were thinking straight, they'd knock off at five o'clock or whatever the official time they should be finishing work is. They might put in a few extra hours, but they would compensate themselves with time in lieu or whatever it happens to be, taking time off to replace the extra time they put in. Everything would be fine and dandy and fair. But no, they don't do that. Because they're stressed, they actually put in extra time for the boss. And that's really good for employers. So stress isn't entirely bad. Now, there's one other thing, or a couple of other things. One is that stress actually creates a sense of Maybe bonding is too strong a word, but it brings a sense of belonging and conformity. What I mean by that is it brings people together. Shared hardship, shared unhappiness, all around stress, of course, means they've got something to talk about, 
unites them in a cause. Now, again, I'm not promoting stress as a good thing, but I'm just saying it's not all bad. There are some, possibly some hidden benefits here. We like talking about our problems. Just look around you. Watch the soaps. People love to have their lives invaded by hardship, by bad stories. This is why they buy so many papers. They spend so much time watching the news and uh, are so obsessed with keeping up with current events, because the media do not report positive things very often. So mostly they're feeding themselves a diet, we are feeding ourselves a diet of negativity, pessimism, fear, and so forth. That's causing stress. Now if we didn't like it, why would we be doing it? So we must enjoy it in some way. So it brings a sense of belonging, being able to moan together, being able to complain together. And of course, finally, and probably one of the most costly aspects to society is that relationships fail. I don't want a divorce costs or a separation, but it causes a lot of hardship and many, many times that goes on for many, many years. But the positive spin on that is if stress breaks up relationships, a broken relationship speaks volumes about opportunities for change for the people who were in that relationship. Instead of being stuck in one position, they're forced out into the world to try new things, to meet new people, to build new social networks, possibly even to move house. And of course, that helps the economy too. Divorcing couples buy two houses or flats or apartments, whatever they can afford, instead of one. Surely that must be good for somebody. Not for them, of course, not for their bank balance, possibly not for the kids, but who cares? Stress feeds the economy. It's very useful, I would anticipate, for some people. There's somebody who wins. And finally, the fourth reason that I think uh, stress maybe is not, it gets bad, bad press basically, because combating stress is hard work. It's difficult to find time to exercise, let's face it. I mean, if you follow all the advice, you're taking extra, regular exercise, you're eating healthily, you're doing sensible things, you're getting enough time to yourself, you're sleeping well, all of the things which actually we already know Nobody needs telling how to feel comfortable and how to be well in life. We're bombarded with information, but we don't follow it. And then we start to say things like, right, I'm going to start a new anti-stress regime. I'm going to exercise regularly. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to take up healthy eating. Now, another thing about uh, this, this healthy eating thing and remaining stress-free or reducing stress in your life, as you know, we are exhorted to drink a great deal of water. Now, a few years ago, I was part of an organisation that um, published a book in the UK by an Iranian author called Batman Gelic, uh, Dr. Batman Gelic, who published a book called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. And he advocated drinking eight pints of water, eight glasses of water a day very, very healthy habit, which kind of got into the social mindset, didn't it? And we were all told to drink eight glasses. Now, I think this has been kind of disproved more recently, but the fact is, most employers provide water. We know that it's very, very, very beneficial to health, well-being, balance, mental functioning, and a whole range of other things that we drink water regularly. Problem is, water tastes boring. Now, not to me, I don't care one way or the other, but I speak to people, and I know from when we were promoting that book or trying to promote it, that a lot of people said they started out drinking eight, gla eight glasses of water a day and they couldn't keep it up because it was boring. Or, as people said to me, I can't drink that much water, poor dears. So, you know, water is boring. It's hard work being told to drink water and stay healthy. Another thing that's really scary is trying to fix faulty relationships. Most, but a lot of people would rather change their relationship go out and struggle, try that dating thing, whatever they do, rather than fix the perfectly good relationship that they've got, because that's scary. Now, that would also reduce stress, but, you know, what the hell? I'll uh, cancel the relationship, I'll jump ship, I'll go out and find a new partner, and, by the way, probably make all the same mistakes I've made before, but I'll ignore that for the moment, uh, because my old partner isn't working too well, it's their fault, and I'm not going to work to fix the relationship. So... Off they go. And then finally, in this uh, fourth, uh, fourth reason, set of reasons I'm giving for, for giving up on combating stress, we'd rather not spend our time learning new habits. We're stressed. We've got so much going on in our lives, trying to keep up with everything and pay for everything, that, uh, you know, learning new habits, stress-free life, remodeling your life, 
No, I don't think so. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of commitment. So most people would sooner not do that. They'd rather remain slightly unhealthy, slightly stressed. They've got something to complain about, but they've got friends they can commiserate with because stress brings you together. They've got a job at least, and they can change it now and again if it gets too bad. They can even take some extra days off every year. And of course that feeds back into the stress and tells them that, it's okay to be stressed because other people are doing it too. And it's my employer's fault because I have to keep taking days off because my job's too stressful. They seem to overlook the fact, by the way, in this mix that actually it's the employees that run organisations. And if employees say nothing, why would employers change their policies? So go with the flow is what I say in this webinar. I was going to say preposterous webinar, but you decide. Um, Maybe the benefits of stress management are oversold. Maybe it's much easier to stop struggling, save the energy. Now, there is a very positive factor here that acceptance is a major factor in mental well-being. The more you can accept things, this doesn't mean don't be angry at injustice or any of those things, but the ability to accept things selectively is very, very good for mental well-being. So if you can accept that stress is part of your life, you're actually practicing your acceptance, which is a good thing in itself. Now, the fact that you're accepting stress simply means you're saving energy. You won't look odd by being any different from anyone else, because nobody likes a smart aleck, do they? Nobody likes somebody who's coming into the office being chilled, looking healthy, suntanned all year round, really relaxed, good at their job, popular, earning good money, and just not stressed. Nobody would like that person, would they? So... You don't want to be that person. Stay stressed, be like the others. Pasty, pallid, tired, bags under the eyes, all of that stuff. Because we're part of an army, folks, and you'll just look like everybody else. And we, whatever we say, we like to conform. People claim they want to be individuals, but actually we're very happy conforming. So it's easier to stay where we are on the same well-worn track. There's no need to plan, eat sensibly, exercise, or even think about this stress management business. So I think you win hands down if you give in to stress. Take the easy route, do nothing. Rely on others to guide you in life. Be popular, support the system, conform and comply. That should go on a t-shirt, shouldn't it? You know, why, why rock the boat by being different? Why prove your colleagues wrong by demonstrating that you can manage your stress well and have a nice quality of life? Just stick with it and avoid the scary twins of change and uncertainty, because that really is a frightening prospect, isn't it? Doing something different, doing something new. Relax. You're good as you are. There's no need to work at it. And I'm a professional. You can take it from me. It's okay. All right? So, there are clouds, but there's always a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of light. There's a silver lining, as they say. And what I've been talking about in this webinar so far is that, you know, maybe stress is demonised. Maybe we're putting too much effort into trying to be stress-free, trying to live wisely and sensibly, trying to follow the good advice that's handed out by people such as myself, of course, but also an army of stress gurus, health advisors, authors, and so forth. Maybe that's all just too much hard work, and maybe we've been sold apart. Maybe, actually, it would be much easier just to go with the flow, be stressed like everybody else, join in and put up with it. It may mean a shorter life, it may mean poorer health, but isn't that a small price to pay if you don't have to put all that effort in? And then I had a thought, of course, because I do have a little saying in life, which is life doesn't have to be like that. In fact, I've made my living as a therapist for the last 30 years. Prior to that, I was a, a manager and business consultant and a parent and a number of other things. But I've made my living believing that life can actually be changed if you don't like something you can do something about it and William James a father of American psychology as he's been called um, said the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thing over another so we have free will we have choice up to a point there's a big debate about free will okay I accept that but we have free choice and we can just go with the flow and do everything I've suggested and take the pressure off and let's face it, that is the easy route because that's what most people are doing anyway. Even when they say they're managing stress, they, they stick to it for a very short time. 
Now, of course, I'm generalising. I know there are exceptions, and they're the ones that prove that your attitude is everything. The greatest weapon, as James said, is our ability to choose. It's our ability to have an attitude and hold it, and also to change our minds, to change our opinions. Well, why change anything? Well, for one thing, I believe that life is a valuable learning process. We're put on earth, if there is a reason, and there may well not be if you're agnostic like me, but we are put on earth to develop and grow, if for no other reason than we allow our children to become better than we are at life. Um, I agree, we don't see much evidence, but that's the theory, that we develop and grow, we achieve more than the generation that preceded us, and that life gets richer for those who follow us. And part of that mix is self-awareness. Self-awareness means looking inside ourselves, understanding our own values, our own thoughts, our own feelings, and it gives us, a benefit, gives us the benefit of control of our lives. Now, though, of course, it also gives us the benefit of understanding what we can't control and not wasting time trying to fix things that are way outside our remit or our scope. This question of self-awareness, some people also call it emotional intelligence, also produces more satisfying relationships. It means that the partners in a relationship are able to keep their relationship healthy and fix it if it starts to get a bit wobbly. It means improved sense of, an improved sense of well-being and fulfilment. Now this comes from all of these points I'm making on this slide, come from a, a wealth of studies. Being self-aware, taking control of your life, being, as Daniel Gorman said, emotionally intelligent and applying the lessons of emotional intelligence to our own lives leads to improved relationships, improved well-being, greater success in life in all areas, and our health, wealth and happiness, lifetime earnings and so forth. We end up more prosperous if we think about ourselves, if we devote some time to our inner life, and if we don't devote some time to our well-being. And what you have to do in order to do that is to stand up, realise who you are, know your values, live by them, make a stand for what you believe in, understand one's own insecurities, because those are what hold us back. They host, my insecurities certainly hold me back, but it's not just a sample of one. You know you have doubts about yourself, and they're what hold you back very often. Uh, by the way, they've got a loud voice, but they don't mean anything. The best thing is to, to learn to ignore them. Be self-aware enough to know which parts of your thinking you can trust and which parts you can't. Step up and take control of your life. And by the way, the way to move towards a goal in life is to create a vision and go towards it. It's not to worry about what you're trying to get away from. If you're trying to be less stressed, forget that, create the vision of a stress-free life or a, a life with less stress in it or manageable stress in it and go towards that. Think about sports psychology. You know, always go towards the goal you want rather than trying to flee what you don't want. For example, athletes do not go out onto the running track or wherever they're performing their particular skills and try not to lose. They just don't do that. They don't run away from failure. What they do is they run towards their best time or the winning tape, or whatever their particular vision is. They run towards the goal they want, or they swim, or they fly, or whatever they're doing. So create a vision and move towards it uh, is a much more powerful way of going about achieving goals, and particularly if you want to become somebody who lives a life that is freer of stress. I don't think you can ever be free of stress. In fact, you shouldn't be, because stress is a stimulant, and it keeps us going. But uh, to a degree, you might want to reduce the amount of stress in your life if you don't follow the advice on the first part of this webinar and create a vision by moving and then move towards the goals. In other words, you become a student of your own well-being. Now, that brings me to the end of this webinar. It was a flight of fancy for me, really. It was just a short series of thoughts coming from a blog post that I thought I'd put together as a little a little video blog here. If you've enjoyed it or if you think it's interesting or if you think I'm 
nuts or if you're mad as hell about what you've heard, I don't mind, but send me an email. Uh, keep it courteous because no point in raising stress levels by using expletives or being rude. But you can follow me on my blog uh, at barrywimbolt.com. You can email me at info at barrywimbolt.com. I've also got a YouTube channel on Barry Wimbolt on YouTube. And um, keep in touch because there's a lot more where this came from. Allowing me to speak to you like this is a great privilege. I hope you've enjoyed it. And it also helps reduce my stress levels. So thank you very much. Goodbye.